I always believed that every guy uh, that I worked with, uh, I, I, you know, I'd always thought they were always smart enough to handle their own business. And, you know, Mike struck me as a fairly intelligent guy, a uh, great guy. In fact, you know, it, 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 I don't know if it comes through or not, but he was one of those guys that would just crack you up. You know, he was a very funny guy on the side. Could be serious at times, but, you know, he was a great guy. I never, ever felt it my place to impose myself or my thinking on somebody else's career. If they asked, I'd give them my input. Um, but, you know, Mike, having come from ECW, I mean, this was a place that I had, you know, partially helped build. And uh, I left only under the most uh, dire sense of urgency. You know, I, I couldn't feed my family. And to me, I do this as much as I love doing it. And this has been a passion for me from the time I've been four years old. I've loved professional wrestling. So for me to leave the company that, that I helped build and had spent, you know, the, the, the highest moments, the, the peaks of my career in wasn't an easy decision. Uh, as hard as that was, uh, I knew that somebody like Mike would also have made the same type of uh, tough decisions and, you know, gone through the same thought processes, if not exactly the same. I'm sure he's intelligent enough to come up with his own, uh, his own outcomes. So I never felt it my place to say to somebody else, hey, Mike, because you have the belt that I used to hold, you, you know, you should do this or that. It wasn't my place. Uh, but uh, I miss Mike. Uh, you know, I think he was uh, a great guy. A little, little side note on Mike. When ECW, in the early, early days of ECW, uh, we were having a battle royal, and it came down to me and Tommy Dreamer. And I, I beat Dreamer, and he rolled out of the ring, and I jumped up playing my character. And when I went to leave the ring, realized I couldn't find the entrance because the fans had closed down on the ring. It was just a circle of fans around the ring, you know, and I, I'm sure wrestlers will tell you, there's been times you get, you get up out of a match and you're not exactly sure which way you came, you know, because the buildings are darkened and, you know, it, it, once the fans close down, you can't see any entrance ways or outways. And uh, the, the fans are surrounding the ring and they start pounding on the apron and a fan jumps up on the apron you know, standing on the apron. Well, earlier that night during a Sabu and Funk match, I had a segment to run down, a very specific cue. And when I ran down, I was to get at ringside right as Sabu would plancha over onto me and bring the fight to me. And Sherry Martell was with me. Well, I get down to ringside and I see Sabu's feet. I remember in my head, seeing his feet get about two inches off the mat, and then I'm, I'm on the floor. And I remember laying there thinking to myself, damn, I, I really misjudged that. Like, how did I misjudge it that much? And I hear Sherry yelling, this motherfucker's got a board. And I didn't know what she was talking about. And there was a big melee, and, you know, that, that was the end of it. So I get to the back and, you know, had cobwebs and, uh, at that point, we still had a truck. This is how early it was in ECW because we didn't use a truck in any of the big years in ECW. And uh, I rewind the tape, and I see as I right as I get to ringside and Sabu starts to jump, a guy in the audience has a two-by-four and whacks me right in the back of the head with it. And uh, I got a good look at the guy. He had bright red hair. So now back to the Battle Royal thing tonight with Tommy. Tommy leaves the ring. I jump up to, to leave, and I can't find the entrance. I'm stuck, and this guy jumps up on the apron as the crowd is pounding their hands on the apron. So uh, I see him, and I immediately remember this is the guy that hit me with the board because he had the bright red hair. Now, this guy was drunk out of his mind, and he thinks he's being part of the show. So I'm trying to talk, you know, what I didn't want is I didn't want him breaking those ropes because when one comes, 50 come or more. And so I'm trying to keep him on the apron. I'm telling him, you come to those folk, fucking ropes. This is where I make my living. I'm going to show you what I do for a living and, and stuff like that to try to keep him at bay. And too stupid to realize 
he steps through the ropes. And when he does, I go into my stance. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm protecting myself. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, where the fuck is the security? Where is anybody? Because I'm out here by myself. And this guy come, starts to step forward as the crowd's chanting him on, go, 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 go. And to this day, and I'll never know, if he went to make a point or if he went to, to grab me, but his hands came up. And when they did, I reached up and grabbed him by his hair and pulled his head down like underneath cross faced him. And I hooked him and I picked him up and slammed him on his face. And for some reason at that moment, hot coup popped in my head. He said, if that ever happens, take their eyeball out. So I put my thumb in the corner of his eye and started oh, pushing. And, you know, the guy tried to be in the balls and I pushed a little bit harder. I said, I'll take your fucking eyeball out. And I pushed further and he went flat as a mouth. I mean, flat as a sheet of paper. And as soon as he did, I felt somebody jumping on my shoulder and I, I, I instinctively rolled up like to defend myself. It was Mike Awesome who had fought his way through the crowd. And he later told me that uh, he just happened to look out the curtain because the cameras had been shut off. That's why I was out there by myself. Nobody knew I was in trouble. He saw that I was in trouble and fought his way through the crowd to get in there. And he jumped on and beat the crap out of this guy. Uh, that was the type of guy that Mike Awesome was. Great guy. 